Thank you very much. We turn now to topical questions. We start with question number one from Sandra White. Thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action the Scottish Government is taking to deal with sexual harassment. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. President Officer, I'd like to explain first of all why I am answering this question when normally it would fall to the Equalities Cabinet Secretary, Angela Constance. The Government wants to make clear that it is the conduct and behaviour of men that needs to change if we are to end the sexual harassment and abuse of women, whether that be in their workplace, their social life or in their home. Therefore, as the most senior male minister in the Scottish Government, I wanted to answer this question and to make clear that it's up to men to make these changes and men must examine their own behaviour. Sexual harassment or abuse in the workplace or anywhere else is completely unacceptable and must stop, just as the underlying attitudes and inequalities that perpetuate it must also stop. What is more, our own institution is not immune from this issue and I want to take this opportunity to encourage anyone who has experienced any form of harassment to report it. Yesterday, the First Minister wrote to you, Presiding Officer, seeking to work across all parties to ensure this Parliament is doing everything it can to make Parliament as a workplace, a place where there is zero tolerance of such behaviour. I therefore welcome the meeting with party leaders taking place later today to discuss what more we can all do to tackle these behaviours and attitudes within this Parliament. No one, staff or member of the Scottish Parliament, woman or man, should have to ever put up with harassment or abuse. I'm sure that this Parliament and all parties are united around the importance of making sexual harassment a thing of the past and that we will work together to achieve this. San <laughs> Sandra White. I thank the Deputy First Minister for his reply and especially welcome the tone and the stance that has been taken. I think a lot has to be learned uh, throughout society, not just in this Parliament. And I take on board what the Deputy First Minister said about a meeting taking place and uh, thank the Deputy Prime First Minister for that information as well. Can I ask the Deputy First Minister what further discussions uh, will be had across all of the political parties at Holyrood to ensure that there are rigorous measures in place consistent across Scottish politics to ensure a zero tolerance approach in relation to such behaviour? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, this is an issue in which all parties will have an, uh, a very close and strong interest and it is right that across the Chamber we unite to send a strong message that there is no place in Scottish politics or in this Parliament or in our constituency offices for any form of harassment or abuse. As I indicated in my earlier answer to Sandra White, there will be a meeting this afternoon which the presiding officer will convene involving the party leaders we welcome that and I commit the Government to working closely with Parliament to ensure that all of these issues are addressed. From the, the Government's perspective, um, we discussed this issue at the Cabinet this morning and the Permanent Secretary will be taking forward all measures within Government to make sure that the same sentiments that I've put on the record here today in Parliament uh, are taken forward within Government where we will uh, challenge our existing approaches and procedures to make sure that uh, all staff are protected from, uh, the, uh, fr from being exposed to sexual harassment in any shape or form. Sandra White. Thank you for that reply. And of course, as uh, has been said, it's not just in political parties also that this takes place, and it is a criminal offence. I hope that they would look towards that as well, regardless of where it happens. Does the Deputy First Minister agree that reporting sexual harassment, bullying or misconduct in any workplace, as I said before, can be extremely challenging, particularly if you're young or a vulnerable adult? Uh, so can the Deputy First Minister tell us what we can do, government, parliament and we as individuals, what we can do to ensure victims have the confidence to come forward and the knowledge that they will be supported and kept safe? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, I don't in any way underestimate the significance of the challenge that it poses to individuals to come, to, re to come forward to report any behaviour of this type. So it is important that a number of things are done. First of all, that we encourage and ensure that individuals come forward to make these complaints and to signal, which I hope my response to the questions today helps to do, that any individual with such concerns should feel uh, able to come forward with those complaints. Secondly, there has to be a ready and a practical and a safe 
space in which those complaints can be brought forward so that individuals can truly feel able to bring forward their concerns. But thirdly, there has to be a change of culture so that it is not, the onus is not on individuals to be raising complaints or expressing their concerns. The individuals are not exposed to the circumstances that may give rise to those complaints. And that is my point about the importance of men examining their own behaviour and acting in a fashion that does not give rise to any such basis of complaints in the first place, to avoid individuals having to go through the very challenging experience that this would involve. And lastly, presiding officer, can I say, Sandra White mentioned the question of uh, pos the possibility of criminal offences being committed. If there is any sense in an, in within an individual that a criminal offence has been committed, I would encourage that individual to go to the police and to get the support and the assistance to which they are absolutely entitled to have their concerns properly addressed. Annie Wells. Thank you, presiding officer. I too would like to reiterate my concerns about the allegations that have emerged in recent days. Sexual harassment in any environment is wrong, and I am pleased that the Scottish Conservatives have established and reinforced the staff the procedures in place to ensure people can raise concerns directly and in confidence. The Scottish Conservatives take this issue extremely seriously, so I am pleased that Ruth Davison has asked for these procedures to be reviewed. Can I ask how the Scottish Government will support women and men affected by this to come forward, and how do we get all organisations to take sexual harassment seriously, including local authorities? Cabinet Secretary. The, the member raises uh, a very important point uh, about the importance of all organisations taking this seriously, and um, that is a message which, as I said in my original answer to, to Sandra White, that the government is taking forward within our own procedures, which we welcome very much the convening of the meeting this afternoon by the presiding officer. Individual local authorities must do likewise. And of course, in the workplace, there are commitments that employers must uh, take forward. So there must be a combination between good procedures that are in place, which enable individuals to feel confident about reporting any behaviour about which they are concerned. But equally, there must be a relentless approach taken forward by all of us to make sure that this behaviour is not behaviour that takes place within our society, because there is no place for it, and individuals should not be exposed to it as part of their daily life. Monica Lennon. Thank you, presiding officer. The media reports about sexism and sexual harassment here at Holyrood are sickening, but unfortunately not surprising. Our parliament cannot think itself immune from the worst excesses of sexist and misogynistic behaviour that women and girls have been experiencing both in and outside the workplace for decades. The initial response from the parliament to set up a, an anonymous phone line is well intentioned, but it must go further. Unless we understand how difficult it is for women to come forward with complaints for fear that they will not be believed or supported and recognise that this is a cultural problem that requires a cultural change, then we will never fully resolve this. Does the, first, or does the Deputy First Minister agree that nothing short of an independent review, um, notwithstanding I know it's a matter for Parliament, but does he agree that a review informed by women's organisations and trade unions is required and that any such review should consider the procedures which are used to report and record incidents and the culture of Parliament more generally, given, for example, that the running of Parliament is currently overseen by all male groups of MSPs? Deputy First Minister. The, the, there will be, um, a, well, there are a number of issues in there that Monica Lennon will understand are the proper responsibility of Parliament, and it would be inappropriate for me as a Minister to comment on those points. But I do um, think it would be a good idea if in the work that all of us take forward in this respect, that we work closely with the organisations in Scotland that have served our country extremely well in supporting uh, women in coming forward to raise their concerns, whether that's Women's Aid or Rape Crisis Scotland or the or organisations like Engender or Close the Gap. There's a tremendous range of organisations who serve our country extremely well in that respect. So I, I think all of us should engage very closely with those organisations and make sure that we provide all necessary uh, support in that respect. I think there's a, a wider 
cultural point that Monica Lennon raises, and uh, it certainly I, I accept that point. That's why I'm here to answer this question, to make that point very clearly to Parliament, that it's important that our attitudes change within our society uh, so that many aspects of uh, our uh, life in our country uh, change for the better as a consequence. And the final point I'd make is that I think we can, be, we can take hope out of other examples where practice has changed. Uh, on the issue of domestic violence, for example, more and more women are prepared to come forward with the proper support to report their experiences. The justice system has been changed dramatically in recent years to ensure that these issues are taken much more seriously and acted upon in every respect. And as a consequence, individuals who have a bad experience in our society, one they should never have had, uh, are able to secure the justice to which they are entitled. And I think we need to take some of the lessons from that experience in how we take forward the issues that we address here. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. Can I thank the Deputy First Minister for his comments so far and echo much uh, of what has been said. Uh, this is a problem which is deeply ingrained in our society and multiple solutions will be needed, both short-term measures uh, but also longer-term approaches which help to assess the culture change in our society that the Deputy First Minister has referred to. Can I ask if he agrees that one of the most important things that we can achieve in terms of that longer-term cultural change is ensuring that every child in every school receives the very highest standard of sex and relationships education? In including a thorough and comprehensive approach to discussing consent and bodily autonomy appropriate at every age. Isn't this one of the most important things that we can do to positively influence the behaviour and attitudes of boys and young men, as well as ensuring that no child grows up under the expectation uh, that abusive, uh, harassing or entitled behaviour is just a normal part of life that they should put up with? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I, I, I I agree with Patrick Harvey on the issue of the importance of education around the, the question of consent. I think it is a fundamental part of the rights of every individual to be equipped with an understanding of uh, their rights in that respect. And the work that the government takes forward on relationship education, uh, which is being significantly strengthened by the dialogue we're having with the Equal Opportunities Committee convened by my colleague, Christina McKelvey, who've given some very valuable input into the government's thinking in this respect, and we will have um, further publications to set out in that respect. But on the fundamental point, I agree with Mr Harvey on the importance of every individual uh, having a deep understanding of the question of consent, and uh, most, more importantly, for their, the whole question of consent to be respected fully within our society. Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, like Patrick Harvey, I certainly acknowledge the complex nature of addressing uh, the problem um, uh, under discussion this afternoon. But also, I welcome the cross-party agreement for new steps to make a complaint process clear and fair. We need to take steps to make sure that those working in this place, wherever they're based, uh, know unequivocally that they will be respected and kept safe. Uh, but would the Deputy First Minister agree that harassment is worst where there are big discrepancies uh, of power? And in that context, MSP staff have the right to complain about MSPs to party business managers or direct to the Ethical Standards Commissioner. Staff have told me this morning, however, that the route to the Ethical Standards Commissioner is not clearly set out in the Code of Conduct, nor the standards le legislation, nor indeed in contracts of employment. Given that con uh, contacting uh, party business managers, one of whom is a government minister, may be a daunting prospect uh, for staff, will the Scottish Government support taking steps to make clear that uh, MSP staff uh, can and should approach the Ethical Standards Commissioners uh, directly where appropriate and necessary? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I think Mr MacArthur makes a fair point, and uh, I'm quite sure that the parliamentary authorities will consider uh, that issue um, as part of the work that is taken forward to address these questions. I think there is a relevance to the issue that Mr MacArthur raises about, frankly, every organisation. And if the process of raising a complaint feels ever more daunting to an individual than it w w would possibly be imagined, uh, we have to make sure that we properly address those issues and make it practical and tangible 
for individuals to make those complaints. So uh, I think that certainly in the work that the Permanent Secretary, for example, will be taking forward on behalf of the Scottish Government, uh, we will be looking to Leslie Evans to ensure that the steps and the approaches that we have in place uh, properly take account of the sentiments that Mr MacArthur has raised today. Thank you. Apologies. There's three other members who want to ask questions, but there's not enough time in this particular session. Move to question number two, Daniel Johnson. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that violent attacks and abuse towards staff in schools have risen by a third in three years. Cabinet Secretary. Officer, it is not acceptable for anyone working in our schools to be assaulted verbally or physically. Classroom assistants and support staff often work with children and young people with the most complex and challenging support needs. And it is important to recognise that the vast majority of pupils are well behaved and respectful. While local authorities are responsible for ensuring that school environments are safe for everyone, we remain committed to working with our partners to continue to improve relationships and behaviour in schools. Daniel Johnson. I'd thank the uh, Deputy First Minister for that answer. Uh, in my view, everyone has the right to safety and security at work, but what these figures reveal is that for thousands of support staff and indeed teachers, uh, th 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 they are regularly uh, facing attacks. Um, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary uh, what support and action the government will be giving teachers and support staff to prevent and reduce these attacks in the future? Cabinet Secretary. The, uh, I, I agree entirely with uh, Mr Johnson about the importance of every individual feeling safe at all times, but especially in a place of work and particularly in an environment where learning staff are there to support uh, young people and to assist them in their education. Uh, the government works closely with all relevant stakeholders and particularly with our local authority partners in the Scottish Advisory Group on Relationships and Behaviour in Schools and the, the group. And we work with that group to ensure that we have in place the appropriate procedures and support to encourage uh, the creation of the appropriate context for learning that is safe for young people and safe also for staff. Um, we obviously work very closely with, um, with organisations to make sure that we have um, a, a preventative approach in place which tries to address difficult behaviour before it presents itself as in any way damaging within our schools. Daniel Johnson. Again, I thank you, the Deputy First Minister, for that response. In particular, I think it's encouraging uh, that the government is seeking to understand the underlying behaviours because it's one thing to prevent the actions, but I think understanding what the underlying cause is that's leading to these behaviours is absolutely critical. Can I ask, therefore, um, what further steps the, the, the government will be taking off the back of these uh, to look at these causes, and will he undertake to report back to this chamber uh, upon that work? Cabinet Secretary. I, I, I acknowledge the, the seriousness of this issue, and I want to assure Mr Johnson of the emphasis that we place on that early intervention and preventative approach. Um, yesterday, I saw um, at Park Primary School in Oban um, a very interesting example of how the school had chosen to use pupil equity funding resources, some of them, where they had employed um, a link worker whose role was to work in dialogue with young people to address issues that they had expressed concerns about, about how they were feeling, which may have an effect on their learning and their behaviour, uh, to the school. The school was a very welcoming environment, very reassuring environment, but the school had taken this extra step of enabling a discussion to be had with individual pupils to help to resolve those issues. And I simply cite that as one example of how schools are responding to this, the challenge that's highlighted by the research, which underpins Mr Johnson's question. Um, so I, I certainly, um, th these issues are very much on my agenda to ensure that we improve the safety and the operation of schools. And we will, of course, keep Parliament informed about developments in due course. Can I thank the Minister and members? Uh, we'll move on to um, the next item of parliamentary business, which is a ministerial statement from Rosanna Cunningham.